The mid-1990s were a time of technological advancement for the video game industry. New powerful 3D graphics, the CD format and the level of quality in video games were reaching new heights and people found more reasons to get a console over going to the arcades and even the personal computer. The year 1995 was a big year for us Westerners. We got two new consoles from Sony and Sega. The PlayStation and the Sega Saturn were the next-gen consoles at the time and both had new 3D games to show off their new graphical capabilities. Fighting games in particular were very successful at this time, so both had to step up for 3D fighting games. Virtua Fighter 1 and 2 for Sega proved to be success stories for the company. Virtua Fighter 2 in particular would become the best-selling Sega Saturn game with over 2 million copies sold. Ironically, Namco made a test program which actually was not meant to be a fighting game. They used the then new technology to make 3D animations, backgrounds and texture mapping which were all eventually used in Ridge Racer. But when they managed to get some of Sega's staff from Virtua Fighter, the team created a new fighting game based off their experience with that series. The result? A game called Tekken was made. In the arcades, Tekken was a smash hit and thanks to it being made for the System 11 board, which was based on PlayStation hardware, porting it to the platform in 1995 was child's play for the team. Tekken would go on to sell over 1 million copies and be vital in establishing early success for Sony and the PlayStation. In 2000, my mom's best friend gave me this game for my 7th birthday and I absolutely loved it. I remember me and my brother playing this game a lot together and loving beating the living daylights out of each other. The question now is, does Tekken still hold up after all these years? Or has its time in the limelight come to an end? It's time to find out, so welcome back to Afro's Curiosities and this is my look back at the first Tekken game. When the game first starts, something odd happens. You get a mini game where you have to shoot these ships and get them all, which is not easy to do. As a kid, I thought this was the whole game, but no! It's a short portion of a game known as Gallagher. If you do shoot all the ships, you can unlock Devil. I didn't ever succeed, but at least it was fun, somewhat. You can skip this if you want to, though. Then, the intro cutscene finally pops up. It shows all of the main characters in a brief manner, giving us a little to work with regarding their backstories and why they are all fighting each other, such as Nina possibly being an assassin here, or police officer, or King being a religious tiger, right? You get the picture. Some of it looks downright strange to me after watching it over. It just looks weird. Um, what's with Law's face? Is he turning into a Super Saiyan? It's clear this was from the early 3D days as the animation is stiff and robotic here. Terrifying might be a better way to describe the cutscene possibly. You be the judge. After that, the main menu pops up. Oh, thank goodness. After that cutscene, I think I might need to go and get some water. Only three options here. Arcade mode, two player mode, and test mode, aka the options mode. This is the definition of barren. There's hardly anything here. Ah well, simple does not mean bad, am I correct? In the test mode, you can set many options such as difficulty, controls, BGM or soundtrack, round times, round amounts and more. After all this and tinkering, going back to the arcade mode, we then get to select our characters. There's eight to start with. We have Yoshimitsu, Nina, Law, 
Kazuya, Paul, Jack, King and Michelle. Don't you just love their faces? They all look as if they were not prepared for their portrait shots. 3D was weird back then. Anyway, the gameplay is about to begin and since I want to go through some of the characters I used, I shall explain the gameplay and features of this game so that the rest of the video can go as smoothly as possible. Let's dig into the mechanics of Tekken. <laughs> Where should I start with this? Hmm, okay, here goes. Tekken is a 3D fighting game. In this game, you simply have to beat your opponent. You can achieve this by either making the health gauge empty, or if time runs out, the person with the highest health bar wins. However, I made sure the timer was unlimited, so the only other outcome could be a draw, which in that case, both players would get a point awarded to them. Tekken is unique in its fighting engine. Although the game has similarities to Virtua Fighter and was made with some of the key personnel from Sega's AM2 division, Tekken has the controls mapped to the limbs of characters. For example, X would be a left kick, square would be a left punch, triangle would be a right punch, you get the picture. To get combos going, players would have to press corresponding buttons. An easy example would be square, triangle to do double punches. But there's a lot of different combos and moves to pull off, and every character feels and performs differently. There's a fighter for everyone to enjoy, so experiment, have fun, and see what you can do. You can also do grabs, massive jumps, and run, which allows you to either do a jump kick attack, or knock the opponent down. Blocking in this game is easy, just hold the back button. It doesn't work with grabs sadly, you will have to duck to avoid these since you can't break out of grabs in this game. Also, there are no ring outs in this game, just a flat plane with a picture of the location you are at. It's not the prettiest sight you'll ever see, but it works. On that note, this is the only Tekken game where the locations are based off real locations. That's right, look up all the places, they are very much real. How cool is that? I'm glad they included Windermere. I've actually been there myself. I wished they kept this element in other Tekken games, as it would have made the series stand out even more. I wonder why they stopped doing this after the first game. I wanted to see my hometown of Birmingham in a Tekken game. Ah oh well. In Tekken, you fight 9 rounds, and the last 2 rounds are the sub-boss, which you can unlock after finishing the arcade mode with your chosen character, and the main boss, Hayachi Mishima, who is Kazuya Mishima's dad. Yes, and look at his face man, he's got some serious issues, or is he trying to be a Super Saiyan? Anyway, once you finish, you do it again with a different character. You can tell this really is the bare minimum for a fighting game. As you can see in the footage, most of the moves I pulled off were mainly basic. I was never good at Tekken, and this still is the case. However, what also does not help Tekken is the controls. It's very stiff, unresponsive at times, and since there's not a lot of moves to pull off, I always got the feeling while playing that some moves were missing. I say missing lightly because future Tekken games fix this problem, and going back to this game makes those missing moves really show through. This is not to say Tekken isn't fun, but your enjoyment of the game will depend on which Tekken game you played first, your tolerance on old 3D games, and if you can get the controls in quick time. Because of nostalgia and the fact that this was my first 3D fighting game, I do have a soft spot for Tekken. So, what do I like about it? The arranged music is great for one thing, it really fits in with the chaos that's occurring on screen, and it is catchy as well. Namco always knew how to make great music on the PlayStation, and once again, it shows here. My favourite track is the one in the Chicago stage. Oh, 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 oh. 
It's just Ace, and I always look forward to hearing that song. Another thing I like is the replay camera. Many fighting games have it, but they only show, what, a second of the action? Tekken shows a bit more, and that is something I also wish could be standard, as it helps to show the build-up to the killing blow. I guess the last thing I really want to comment on is the PAL optimization here. Uh, it is rubbish. As mentioned before, I said the controls are stiff and hard to get working a lot of the time. It's clear the game was designed with 60 hz in mind. This is great if you lived in Japan or the United States, but here in Europe? Well, we sure didn't get any love. No wonder people look down at us. Anyway, the poor power optimization will mean newcomers will hate the sloppiness of the game. It can also ruin the flow of the game too. Certainly not ideal for a fighting game. Okay. I think I've gone over everything I needed to say, so let's see how I did in Tekken with some of the characters I used. Let's do this. Let's get the show on the road. I started playing with Michelle Chang. She is a young woman of Chinese and Native American descent and her fighting style is a variation of Kenpo called Chang Kenpo. To be fair, Michelle is an interesting character to play as. My favourite move from her is when she does a low punch with her right hand and then quickly does a massive high left uppercut. I also love this kick. Always seems to be a good counter attack. Anyway, Let's see how I did. <laughs> Paul is the first one to face me. Seeing as this is the first round, I didn't expect much. I mainly used this round to get some practice in and to see which moves I could pull off successfully. Needless to say, most of them were either not pulled off successfully or I got hit before anything could happen. The more basic moves seemed to do the job better, especially my constant quick low kicks here. Paul did get one round back on me but my aggression and use of my kicks handed me the win. Also, I love the animations when you win, they just look funny. Next up, I had to face the Bruce Lee impersonator, Martial Law. This guy has martial arts skills that Lee would be proud of. His backflips are deadly, and of course, his kicks will make you wish you could do the same right back to him. The first two rounds were back and forth between me and Law, but I started to keep my distance and took advantage of Law being unable to block my moves. He did well, but I was just a bit smarter. Still, Law's face looks incredible, right? Jack is next. Jack is an android, or a robot basically, and is a punching master. This is where he excels due to his size. In contrast though, his kicks are weak and have no reach. The first round was pretty easy. No chance for this man to even get going. However, this started to go south as Jack got the drop on me. Needless to say, it's payback time. The rounds went back and forth until finally, in the last round, Jack was soundly defeated by my low kick approach. Jack can't defend against this boy. I will admit, he did give me a run for my money.
<laughs> Kazuya is definitely one to watch out for. He's the main character in the game, since a lot of the Tekken storyline revolves around him and his father, Hayachi Mishima. Not to mention he is blooming powerful, quick and can make you look weak in seconds. The first round proved my point, as Kazuya wastes no time in making me look bad. <laughs> But I have a few tricks up my sleeve too and as you can see, he can't handle me. I was about to get my third victory twice, but then... Yes, twice, he countered me. Blast! The last round was a joke though. I beat him far too easily and he threw in the towel. Talk about not making it to the finish. You win. Next up, it's Nina Williams. Nina is an Irish assassin who is cold-blooded and ruthless. She also has some beef with her sister, Anna Williams. Nina is a legend without doubt, and this first round shows why. She pretty much makes mince meat out of me and does so with style. After going back and forth in the round, Nina tries to finish me off. No chance. I never backed down from a good fight. Once again, I pulled it out of the bag and finally take down Nina. I will say, she really showed off why she's loved by the Tekken enthusiasts. And now my second least favourite character after Jack, Yoshimichu. You'd think I'd love his ninjutsu style of fighting and his sword, right? Well, on a different character, sure. This guy? Not so much. I wish I could explain why I never really liked him, but I know this is an unpopular opinion. Also, getting battered by this guy isn't cool either, so with that, I won the first fight. <laughs> Clearly, Yoshi here didn't agree with my statement on him and proceeded to kick my behind. I was mad as hell at that and I knew what I had to do. Yoshi didn't make it easy for me, however. He wanted to prove himself. After that, however, his fate was sealed as I did a 1-2 victory on him. Nice try sir, but I think your fighting days are over. You win. Now it's the OG King. King is a fantastic character. He's a Mexican wrestler with very fast punches and some pretty explosive kicks to boot. King's moves can cut down your defense and leave you helpless. I was pretty worried, needless to say. My worries were justified as King proceeds to destroy me. I was no match for him, but throwing in the towel is not an option for me. After a hard fought battle, I won the second round. Of course, King was mad as hell and pummeled me again. Then I did the same right back to him. Eventually, despite everything King tried, I beat him and claimed my victory finally. Now, can you understand why King is so amazing in this game? Kunimichu is Michelle's sub-boss. She is like Yoshimichu, only a bit more skilled, hasn't got a sword, and is female. Although, you wouldn't know that by the sound she makes. Oh. 
equal opportunity perhaps? The first round goes well for me. It was a near perfect performance and seeing how well I did, I thought I'd be owning this matchup. It looked that way in the second round as I once again dominated the round. But then, I got too cocky and Cooney owned me big time. Now, it's real. I took no prisoner in the next round. I took care of Cooney easily. The final round was pretty close, but I was always in control and it only took one mistake to finally finish Cooney off. Now, onto the final boss battle. Hayachi Mishima is the final boss. He is lean, mean, powerful, cheap, and god damn it, what's with his face? Either he loves his teeth or he has a case of the law! Anyway, Hayachi is like Kazuya, father like son, right? He is no pushover, that's for sure. The first round certainly proved it. Hayachi wasted no time showing why he's the boss. Now that we know what I'm up against, it was time to fight back. Wow, what a comeback, baby. See this? That's how you become a god. Or at least beat Hayachi. Oh, and look, I beat him again fairly easily with a sliding kick. I'm in the zone now. Ah, yes, the next round was very, very close. I just needed one more hit. Just one more hit! Damn it! He got me! Stupid overpowered sod! Last round. Okay, not good. Hayachi has the advantage. One mistake and I'm a goner. Thankfully, a great use of my kicking combos finally handed me my victory. Ugh, that was pretty intense. Now let's watch Michelle's ending. Um, Michelle, you left something important. Michelle? Michelle! And that was Michelle's story. However, that's not the end of the video because I do have some other characters that I did play as. I've mentioned before that King is a Mexican wrestler who has a great punching combo, deadly kicks and can cut down defences down to size. To me, he is the best Titan character in the game and when I was younger, I would always use him. I love the sound of his punches and that growl he makes when he's on the attack. King is awesome. Anyway, let's see how I did. Jack was... Pretty easy to be honest. No guts, no challenge, and a piece of cake. In fact, King probably ate Jack for dinner after the fight. Next! Nina um, wasn't much better either. I would have finished her off much sooner. But there's this move where King flies into the air and lands on his opponent with his knees. It was my favourite move when I was a child. After a few fails, I finally got it to work. After that, Nina was a piece of toast. Next! Kazuya was my toughest opponent yet. He put up a good fight and even beat me in one of the rounds. Sadly for him, my fast punches, aggressive tactics and my ultimate move rendered him unable to fight anymore. Next! Paul Phoenix is a tough nut to crack. Even though 
He has the most 90s hairstyle of all time. His judo skills and tough biker attitude can mean a lot of pain inflicted on you! Oh, I also love the sound he makes when you defeat him. How do you make that sound? Okay, that's not it. Anyway, the fight. Yes, the fighting! Paul certainly gave me a good run for my money. However, in the end, he was never going to beat King. Next! <laughs> Michelle is a worthy fighter thanks to her skills and various ways she can chain link combos one after another. This was the case as she really put up a very good fight. She really had me on the ropes. But I'm using King and I do not like to lose either. In the end, a good contest was won by yours truly. Next! <laughs> Oh look, it's the character I like to batter, again. Just like the good old fish and chips, eh? Yeah. Yoshi tries his best to beat me, but no matter what he does or tries, I just destroy him and make him wish he never met me. Next. <laughs> Marshall Lockjar Law is back, but he is no match for the king. Beating Law turned out to be much easier than I expected. In fact, I was somewhat disappointed. I was expecting a much better turnout. Anyway, I won, so next fight. <laughs> Armor King is King's rival, which makes sense for him to be the sub boss. After a lot of back and forth sparring, I eventually beat Armor King. It wasn't easy and the fight could have gone either way, but it's clear I'm the better king, baby. Hayachi is back to try and cause some pain to the king. Let's see what he's made of. Hayachi goes for it and knocks me out in the first round. Sadly, he's on my favourite stage with my favourite character. So the chances of him beating me is basically not going to happen. Needless to say, I won the fight and in style. So let's watch King's ending. I just love his ending so much. It's just him returning to the orphanage with some badly green screen kids around him. Now that's funny. <laughs> Kazuya to me is the main character in this game as the Tekken story resolves around him and his father Hayachi. Kazuya uses the Mishima style fighting karate moveset. It's a very powerful moveset if you know what you're doing, which I don't, obviously. Anyway, let's see how I did. King was pretty weak. He was no match for me and I crushed him in seconds. Eat my dust, King! Nina was slightly better, but she too was no match for Kazuya. After all, he is bad, mad, and a powerful mother trucker. Next round. Yoshi's back! Yay! And other than a decent fight in the first round, Yoshi put up a really poor showing against me. Remember, losing to Yoshi is like eating a donut with apples inside of it. It doesn't taste too good. Lockjaw Law definitely gave me something to think about. He was pushing my skills and patience to the limit. It was down to the final round and it was pretty close. Thankfully, I was able to push for victory. Next fight. Jack's long range punches and strange movesets did give me some troubles and I had to psych him out so that he would drop his guard. This paid off and thankfully I ended up winning in a convincing manner in the end. Next fight. 
In the first round, Paul got me good. After that, however, every subsequent win I managed got easier and easier until it was evident that Paul quickly lost his spark. In the end, an easy win. Next, please. Perfect. Michelle is a tough chick, and you can see why. She is a dangerous lady to fight against, that's for sure. Thankfully, I was able to whittle her down bit by bit, and even the last match ended in yet another perfect round. Next, please. Lee is a bloody sod. He kicks without stopping. He has so many ways to end you, and he is cocky too. Look at this. How am I even supposed to get near him when he won't stop kicking? Well, if he wants to be cheap, then I can match that too. In the end, what looked hopeless ended with my victory. Like father, like son. Time to put Hayachi in his place. Oh, well, it didn't start off too well, but gradually, over time, I got the better of Hayachi, and after a while, I beat him and reclaimed my throne as the better fighter. Now, let's see the iconic ending for Kazuya. <laughs> Oh, I also did use Paul Phoenix as well. Because this video is already long, I won't show how well I did with him, but I did beat Hayachi, face Kuma, the best character ever, and got his ending, so let's watch it. Well folks, that was a good look at Tekken. How do I feel about it today? It's still kind of fun. The music is good, the amount of moves are still decent enough, and you can use up to 17 different characters. That's impressive for the time. But the game is very stiff, it's lacking in the moveset department, the backgrounds don't look too great, and it has no other modes to play, so it feels bare bones. Oh, and the cutscenes look wooden and stilted, a consequence of early 3D animation. In 1995, Tekken served its purpose, to outshine Virtua Fighter, and it did that perfectly. Tekken is now one of the most successful 3D fighting series of all time. It shows no sign of slowing down after nearly 25 years later, and that is an achievement. However, this game is now difficult to recommend, unless you are willing to forgive the flaws this game presents to you. But I hand off the question to you. What do you guys think of the first Tekken game? Do you still say it's worth playing today? Or would you say it's time to move on with the times? Let me know, and until next time, I will see you in my next video.